In this video, I am going to share with you the only rice water recipe you need for maximum hair growth and exactly how to use it. Also at the end, there will be a Q&A section because I have tons of videos on rice water and I will link the playlist at the end of this video, but every single time I still get tons of questions in the comment section. But wait till you watch the Q&A because your question about rice water might just be answered in that section. If you don't know me, my name is Angelica. I post videos twice a week all about growing long, healthy hair. So if that seems interesting to you, consider subscribing. The subscription button is right down there as well as the bell. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time I post. Let's get straight into the demo. So here we are starting with some rice. This is the same rice I use all the time. It is regular Zambian rice. It is from my aunt's farm. So you can get any kind of rice as long as it is white rice. Now the Yao women love to use the starchiest rice. So the closest thing I would recommend to you is to use sushi rice if you have access to that. If not, use any kind of rice. But please do not use parboiled rice because parboiled rice already has the nutrients boiled out, basically, most of them. So as you can see, this rice is straight from a farm. It is very dusty, but whether you get your rice from a package, you still want to wash it. So I was just rinsing it with tap water, and as you can see, almost everything is out. Now I am putting that rice into a glass jar. Make sure you use a glass jar, and now I am pouring in some warm water. You might see a little bit of steam. That's because it is very cold, so slightly warm water will steam, but don't use hot water. First of all, it could break the glass. Second of all, you're not trying to boil the rice. You can if you want to, but I don't recommend it just put hot water or very warm water if it is very cold right now if the weather is very hot you don't need to put warm water just put regular room temperature water now it is time for the orange the Yao women use a pomelo fruit I do not have access to a pomelo fruit I've never actually seen one in person if you have that use that if you have a grapefruit that is the second best option i didn't have either so i went to the third best option which is orange now this is just my easy way to peel an orange you want to slice it into four lift up the little tips with your knife away from your face so you don't cut yourself or spray any of the citrus into your eyes and then it will be so easy to peel the orange and the reason why i'm suggesting you peel it like this is because you have the highest chance of not getting any of the inside part of the orange into your rice water. That is very, very bad for, me, for your hair. That direct citrus can actually cause some kind of discoloration and damage, especially if you go out in the sun. You want clean peels just like mine with completely no inside part of the orange, grapefruit or, or pomelo. Whatever you use, you don't want the inside. Now we're putting the orange into the jar. This orange the orange peels actually release a little bit of citrus and they also help absorb that horrible rice water smell, which actually doesn't smell that horrible to me. Now I'm just showing you the inside of this lid so you can see that it closes airtight and I am closing it as tight as I can. It doesn't matter if it's slightly difficult to open, you want to make sure that it is airtight so nothing can come out. And then you want to store it in a dark cupboard as I have shown you, close it in there and leave it for five days. Now this rice water is is still fermenting so this clip is from a different video and you know it's fermented because when you move the rice like that little bubbles are going to come up and I did put mint in this rice water this is from my other video but in the current one I'm making I realized the mint is actually unnecessary so now you take out the peels and you see they just look kind of soft but they don't look moldy or gone bad if they went bad you would easily be able to tell so once you take that out, now it is time to put the rice with the water into a bowl. And this is where you get most of the nutrients out of the rice water. Some people boil it to do this. I find this is way, way, way more nutritious because you're not going to denature any of the nutrients in your rice. So what you want to do is either use one hand like I'm showing or rub the rice between two hands like I'm showing, which is my favorite, way more effective, much quicker. You want to do this for about five to six minutes until the water is as white as milk. You'll see soon that I'll put my hands down in the water and you can't even see through the water at all. It is just like milk. That's how you know that your rice water is done and the starchier your rice is, the easier it's going to do this. So now I'm going to pour some into my spray bottle, which is what I use to spray into my hair. Of course, you can put it in anything else. So 
Now in my spray bottle, I'm adding about five to maybe 10 drops of peppermint oil. And then I'm following up with my favorite organic tea tree oil. You don't have to use the brands I'm using. You can use whatever you want. I'll link some recommendations in the description box below so you can check that out. So the rice water is done in the spray bottle. And once it's done like that, all you have to do is shake it up and you are good to go. Now for the rest of the rice water, this will be stored in the fridge. So you want to strain out all the rice because you've got all the nutrients out of it. You don't need it anymore. Now, I might have not shown this in this video, but at the end, after I add a little, a little water, I will go ahead and add more orange peels. So after the five days, take the rice out, take the peels out, strain it, massage it until it's as white as milk. Then you put in more orange peels, close it and put it back in the cupboard to ferment for up to six weeks, depending on the climate. I'll get into that a little bit later in the video, but depend depending on how hot it is where you live, you can decide how long you want to ferment it in the cupboard before you keep put it in the fridge and then you can store it in the fridge so now here is how i do my application this is my favorite way to apply i don't know if you can tell but my hair is completely dry in this video and what I'm doing is spraying on the scalp first because rice water has amazing benefits for your scalp and your roots. If you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock, it's literally like a liquid vitamin. It has inositol from the fermentation. It has a bunch of B vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin E. It is so amazing for hair growth and it works best on your roots, but also on your hair shaft. So after it's thoroughly worked into your roots, you want to go ahead and massage that in and then spray it on the rest of your hair all the way down the shaft and on the ends. I am using this as a pre-pull, which means before I shampoo my hair, there is absolutely nothing else added to my hair. If you see any white product or anything, that's just my product from earlier on in the week. I do this before my shampoo. So I spray it in sections and then I twist up every section. And also when the hair is dry, it ensures that you use a lot of rice water and you know exactly how much you're using. So now I go under a plastic cap or a plastic bag if I don't have a plastic cap and I go under heat for exactly 20 minutes. And once the 20 minutes are done, I wash it out and that is the best way to use it. I did cut off four to five inches of my hair when it was straight. So it is time to get that back as you can see though, my hair is flourishing. It is doing amazing. It is time for the Q&A section. So wait, 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 before you leave that comment in the comment section and say, can I use this? Um, What about if I just watch this part and your question might be answered. I'm starting with the most common question I get asked every single rice water video I post. Somebody asks this question and this is, can I leave it in my hair overnight or can I just like leave it in for as long as I want till I wash my hair again? The answer is no. In any occasion, the answer is no. Do not leave the rice water in your hair. Please note that all my answers in this Q&A section are my own opinion according to what's worked on my hair and according to all the research I've done, including from the source, the people who use it the most, the Yao women. So at the end of the day, I cannot make you do anything. I can't tell you what to do. I'm giving you my best opinion. My opinion is never leave it in your hair. However, if you decide to leave it in and somehow it works for you, go ahead. It is your hair. You can do whatever you want. This is general for every other question. I'm just answering it now. It's your hair. You can do whatever you want. These are just my opinions and my best advice. Okay, so now I have a second part to this answer. You can leave the rice water in your hair if it is formulated into a product. And I don't mean get your leave-in conditioner, pour in some rice water, mix it together and put it in your hair. No, there are certain products like some leave-in conditioners. I think maybe Myel Organics has like a rice water collection. In that way, it's been formulated in a way that your hair, like if it is a leave-in conditioner, it's formulated in a way that your hair can accept it and it won't cause any like brittleness and dryness. But again, hair is also individual. That's just a general consensus to say, if this is a leave-in and it contains rice water, you can absolutely leave it in your hair. But like the rice water in this video, always wash it out. Okay, now the other question I get is already basically answered in the little demo that, that I showed before but I still get this question every single time. Exactly how and when should I use it? My best advice from the best ways I have tried so many times over the years, the best way to use rice water is as a pre-poo. And this is 
before you shampoo your hair. So on the day when you're going to wash your hair, not in the morning, no, just before. Spray the rice water in your hair, put it on your scalp. This is why I love rice water because it works on your scalp and on your entire hair shaft from root to tip. Put it on your scalp, massage that in, spray it all over your hair, spray a little bit more on the ends, cover your head with a plastic bag. Go under heat for 20 minutes exactly. You can obviously go on like a little five minute extra, but try and aim for exactly 20 minutes. Take the cap off, go in the shower, and then shampoo your hair and continue your wash day however you do it. I don't know what you do. You can go ahead and do whatever you've been doing exactly how you've been doing if it's been working for you. If you want to add rice water, just add it that one step before. No other changes need to be made. Just continue what you're doing. That is the best way to use it. Now, if you feel like even when you do this, your hair still feels a little bit dry, it feels like it's not really working well, try this. Plan your rice water day two weeks in advance. So let's say I want to use rice water next week, but I do have a wash day, let's say today. When I wash my hair today, I am going to wash my hair, I will condition it. Then when it is time to do my leave-in stage, I will not seal in my leave-in conditioner. I will only use my moisturizer, braid my hair up or twist it up, however you want to keep it. You can do whatever you want. Do not seal it in with an oil. Just use the moisturizer. If you want to use an oil, you can put it on your scalp. You know, essential oils, all those oils are beneficial for our scalps. You can, get, you can go ahead and use whatever oil mix you have or whatever oil you have on your scalp. Don't put it on your hair because you might be blocking the effects of the rice water from penetrating into your hair because the only way to get that oil off is to wash it off with a shampoo. So do not put any oils on your hair. Wait until the next week. Do your rice water 20 minutes before and if you have to go back to using your oils, you can try and go back and use your oils then. But try skipping the oil a week before you use the rice water so that there's no barrier between the rice water and your hair. Okay, this is another very commonly asked question and this is, if my hair is in a protective style, can I still use rice water? The answer is yes, it depends. What protective style do you have in right now? Do you have access to your scalp? Because if you have like a weave and your hair has like a mesh over it and then you put rice water in there and you can't really wash it out, that's a recipe for disaster. You're going to end up with dry, brittle hair because a lot of people say, oh, rice water makes my hair so hard because it has so much protein. It does have protein, but it doesn't have enough protein to cause protein overload. The problem is the starch. It's the starch and the protein together that makes your hair feel a little bit brittle. Now, fermenting the rice water for as long as I do usually gets rid of any kind of brittleness. I only used to feel that when I would ferment my water for up to like 48 to maybe 72 hours. But ever since I passed the five day mark of fermenting my rice water, I never get any of the like starchy hardness in my hair. And I do have low porosity hair, but... If you have to use it in a protective style, do it on your wash day. I always suggest that you wash your hair even if you're in a protective style. So if you're in braids, if you have cornrows, if you have twists, if you have whatever protective style, if you have access to your scalp, you can use rice water only on your wash day exactly as I explained before. Spray the rice water in your hair for 20 minutes, let it sit. If you can go under heat, go under heat, under a cap of course, go ahead and Proceed with your wash day, shampoo, condition, do everything else. So yes, use it in a protective style, but on a wash day, it is not a leave-in cream. It's not a moisturizer. So don't just spray it in and be like, oh yeah, my hair is growing in my braids. It's not. Or it could be, but it will break. So there's no point. The next question is basically what I just explained. And this is a question I get a lot. And this is, if my hair is low porosity and protein sensitive, can I use rice water? I have low porosity hair and it is pretty protein sensitive and I do use rice water all the time. The thing is just don't overuse it. If you're using it every couple days, every single week, you might be getting some side effects because too much of a good thing, too much of anything is bad. The next thing is what kind of container should I store it in because my rice water goes bad very fast or I just don't know what to keep it in. The best thing to keep your rice water in is glass because you get the least amount or no reaction during the fermentation process. Plastic is the worst option. Metal could work but it's not ideal. 
glass is the best. Now, aside from glass, it's not just that the bowl or it's not just that the container should be glass. The main thing above everything else, like let's say you don't have access to glass and you're going to have to use metal. What's more important is that the jar is completely airtight. No matter what, no matter what container you use, it has to be airtight, completely airtight. I have made rice water before in like a coffee kind of jar and I don't even want to show this video, but I'm going to show the clip. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is that? The orange peels or whatever like fermented and they had mold and it was so like disgusting. If any air can go in, your rice water is not going to ferment. It's literally going to like go directly from fermenting to spoiled and you won't get any of the benefits. You can't even ferment it for as long as possible. The way I ferment my rice water, it literally lasted six months in that airtight jar and I would open it, get a little bit of rice water, quickly close it, put it back where I store it and it lasts. Like literally I just threw it out because I was like, okay, now, now it's just too much. This is just too old. There was maybe, I don't know, something could go wrong, but it literally never went bad. And that leads me to my next question, which is how do I know if my rice water has gone bad? You will know very easily because if you have any kind of orange peels or whatever during the time that it goes bad, there's going to be mold. It's just going to be like slimy. It's going to look disgusting. It's going to look bad. The second way is I know that rice water doesn't have a very pleasant smell already, but if you use the recipe that I use, you basically just kind of smell peppermint and citrus. It doesn't really smell like rice water, but however it smells, the smell will change. It'll smell different. It'll just smell funky. Okay. And the other thing is the color usually changes. It usually gets like a beige, like brownie kind of weird. I don't mean like brownie, like brown. I mean like, like a light brown beige kind of color. It will just kind of discolor a little bit. And once it goes bad, just throw it out. The next thing I'm answering this one as well, because people tend to get confused even when I explain it in my videos. And this is exactly how long should I ferment it for and how should I do it? Okay. So my minimum now is five days. I don't do anything less than five days. I actually barely do anything less than a couple weeks, but if I'm in a hurry, like now I feel like I really need to use it and I have no rice water after five days, I can get a little bit out, but then I will close it and put it back. Now this will all depend on the climate that you live in. If it is extremely hot, probably maybe two weeks would be your max. And then once you reach like, okay, I've reached my max fermentation and then store it in the fridge. And then in the fridge, again, it also depends on your climate. It depends on your kind of fridge and you just have to monitor it until it goes bad. But also just don't make too, too much, like make an adequate amount that you know you can use for, you know, a couple uses, like maybe six uses so that because you don't use it every single week, there will be weeks in between where it continues to ferment. So once it reaches the final fermentation, put it in the fridge and leave it there until you are completely done with it. It still will be fermenting, but it will be fermenting very, very, very slowly because it will be completely cold and the fermentation process is almost stopped. This is another very, very, well, I'm going to say this for every question because they are all commonly asked questions, but this one close to the sim close to the first question i get asked this all the time and this is can i put oils into my rice water and oils they're usually referring to carrier oils like olive oil castor oil and they also ask the question like if i don't have peppermint oil and i don't have tea tree oil or one of them can i put olive oil or castor oil or almond oil instead no Oil and water, they don't mix, okay? Even if you shake it up, it just kind of looks like it mixed. It's still going to separate. There's no point. However, essential oils are extremely light and very dry, so they can mix into water. It's very easy, barely separating. So those are very essential to your hair. They'll go to your scalp. They'll actually have amazing effects. The rice water is going to absorb into your hair, and then the oil is kind of going to just sit on top and seal it in. And rice water is not something you want to seal in. You want it to be completely washed out. Once it's done the job and your hair has absorbed the benefits, it's done. You can rinse it out. Keeping it in is not going to help you with anything. What I would advise is if you want to use those oils like castor oil, um, 
avocado oil, olive oil. What you want to do is use rice water the way I explained it as a pre-poo, do your wash day routine, wash it out. And then those oils that you like, just use them on your scalp and then maybe if the ends of your hair feel like super dry or whatever, you can go ahead and just rub a little bit of that oil and put it on the ends of your hair. Please do not put carrier oils into your rice water. It is not helping anything. The next question is how long is it going to take my hair to grow after I use this rice water? This is the one question I literally could not give you a proper answer because everybody's hair is different and everybody deals with their hair differently. So for example, when I don't use rice water for like two months, like now, when I use the rice water, probably in like, it kind of doubles the rate of my hair growth or even triples it because usually I get about half an inch of hair in a single month. Sometimes I'm sure it's a little bit less, sometimes I'm sure it's a little bit more, but on average it's about half an inch per month. However, when I use rice water, especially when I haven't used it after a long time, I can get even up to two inches in a single month. But that could happen to you, but if you don't comb your hair properly, you like have damaged split ends, you could even get more than two inches in a single month, but then you break all of it off and you're like, this rice water didn't do anything. I've been using it for a month and my hair still looks the same. Maybe it's not the rice water. However, sometimes, especially when I'm using rice water more often, I find that it just gives my hair a little bit more like strength. My strands start to feel a little bit smoother eventually, and it starts to improve the overall health of your hair. But it's not, I mean, it's not magic, okay? It's not gonna make your hair grow like an inch overnight every single time you use it. It might never make your hair grow like faster than usual over time, but it might really improve the health of your hair, which will help you retain length much, much faster. So I literally could not tell you if it's going to make your hair grow or not. I would just suggest that you try it and give it about a six week trial period before you decide whether it works for you or not. The next thing is, oh my God, rice water is working so amazing for me. Can I use it every day? No, I don't know why. I keep getting asked the same question. Just because something works amazing doesn't mean you do it every day. It works well enough when it's working how it's supposed to be. Use it once, once to twice a month, like every other week. If your hair can handle it every week, like once a week should be the max, but twice a month is perfectly fine and you will start to see amazing changes. Using it every day will only do harm. It's not going to help you. Even if maybe the first month it might seem like it's working, in the long term you'll see the side effects. So please do not use rice water every day. Even just on your edges or just on your ends or just on one specific part, no, don't use it every day. The next thing is something that went quite viral on YouTube for a while and I did make a whole video about this but in case you don't want to watch that video I'm just going to answer it here. Does rice water contain arsenic in it and is that what's making my hair dry or damaging my hair? The answer is yes and no. It depends on where you buy your rice from. So if you're buying specifically American rice, lots of American rice fields contain arsenic in the soil. So as the rice is growing, the arsenic is in it. So take note, if you don't want to put the rice water in your hair because you think it has arsenic, please do not eat that rice because arsenic in your body is worse than arsenic on your hair. So if you think the rice is fine to eat but not to put on your hair, I don't know what kind of logic you're using. Most of the soil has a little bit of arsenic in it. However, African soil and Asian soil has the least amount of arsenic compared to any other place. So I would suggest wherever you go and buy your rice, just look at the back of the package and see where the rice is purchased from and make sure you try and get, I think rice from Asia is the easiest to get around the world. Just see if the rice was grown in Asia there's a high chance it has little to no arsenic in it. And then a lot of people say, if the rice water has arsenic in it, you can just boil it out. The answer is yes and no. If you boil the rice like so much to the point where it's just like mush, you will burn the ar you will boil the arsenic out, but you also boil out every single vitamin and nutrient and nutrient that's in the rice. So technically boiling the arsenic out is literally making the rice water useless. You're just putting cloudy water in your hair. It's not going to do anything. So if you think that the arsenic is going to damage your hair or arsenic in rice is harmful to your hair and you're gonna boil it out, just find something else. Try, if you're looking for a DIY, try like avocado or aloe vera or something. Just leave the rice water alone because the boiling it is just killing it. You're just wasting your time 
and stressing your hair out for nothing. What if I use rice water on my hair and it makes my hair like very dry and brittle and no matter how I use it, even if I use the recipe you use, the recipe I made, whether I use someone else's recipe, whether I ferment it overnight or for two days or two weeks, no matter whether I use it as a pre-poo or a final rinse or a final rinse or a leave-in, however I use rice water, it doesn't work on my hair. The answer is in your question. It just doesn't work on your hair. Not everything works on everyone's hair. Sometimes it might do harm. Sometimes it might do absolutely nothing. You won't know unless you try, so try it out. If you've tried every other way around it and it doesn't work, move on. Find something else. Something else will work much better in your hair. I always give the example of coconut oil. A lot of people love coconut oil. Oil It makes their hair feel amazing. It makes their hair feel smooth, shiny, stronger. I put coconut oil on my hair and it instantly gets hard. If it is formulated into a product I'm already using, usually it works fine. So if you really want to try rice water, perhaps try buying something like a leave-in conditioner or a deep conditioner that contains rice water, but the exact natural rice water might just not work well for you and that is okay. Not everything works for everyone. You can't force it. It's only going to cause more damage. So once you notice it's not working, just immediately stop using it, leave it alone. Another question, I feel like this is a more recent question. When I started posting rice water videos, I didn't really get this question, but recently, whenever I see any comments on my older rice water videos, there's at least one of these questions. And this is, can I mix my rice water with another DIY like onion juice, garlic, um, ginger, aloe vera, flaxseed, like so many different kind of DIY mixes that are not necessarily oils? No. And the real reason is not because I'm like, well, you should only use rice water by itself because it's special. Natural products are highly unstable. We are not chemists, we are not scientists. Just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's going to just work with everything. Natural products are still chemicals. Even you, as a person, you are made of chemicals. You have H2O, you have blood, you have like, everything is a chemical compound, even if it is a natural product growing straight out of the ground. We just addressed arsenic, which is harmful in large quantities. Just remember, it's the dose that makes the poison. You can season your food with a little salt and it's gonna be perfectly fine. If, if anything, it's helpful. Eat a whole bowl of salt, you're probably gonna die, okay? The dose makes the poison. If you want to try onion juice, just designate a little two weeks where you don't try anything else. Try the onion juice, see if it works on your hair. If it works, fine. If rice water works, fine. Use them separately. Don't mix them together. It is not necessary. It can go bad. You might see good effects now, but worse effects in the long term. Please do not mix your DIYs. You don't have to use everything. You don't have to mix any DIYs. You don't even have to use DIYs at all. You could watch this video and say, you know what? I think I now trust the benefits of rice water. I'm going to the mall and I'm buying a product that contains rice water. That is perfectly fine. Natural is not better than chemicals. Chemicals are not better than natural. What's best is what works and that's it. Now let me know in the comments whether you like rice water or not. Let me know, does it work for you? Does it not? What is your favorite way to use rice water? I would love to know. I don't care if you hate rice water. Just let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know what you would like to see next. Hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning. Watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here if you'd like to see any of my older videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one.